So this is how Protable SA integrates with our RF transmitter and a VDRO software installed on a computer. When we move the carriage, we see the re regular digital readout updates like we expect, and that's actually outputting the dimension into the radio transmitter. If no lights are showing on the transmitter, everything's good and it's transmitting to the computer as we expect. We move the carriage on the protable, that transmitter is sending the measurement. You can see the measurement over here on the receiver. The information is coming in on channel number one. That receiver is connected to the computer on a USB port. And as we move the carriage on the screen, you can see the current position of the carriage. We have a particular part we're interested in measuring. We can have that in our VDRO database. We click on part search. Go over here and just find the part that we're interested in. I happen to know I'm right now I'm looking for part number one. It shows us a photo of the part so we know we've got the right unit. And then it loads the part and gives us the part ID, a description, a nominal value, an upper and a lower value. Now I've located part number one. I load it into the pro table. I close the carriage onto the part where it's up against the fixed jaw and the moving jaw. And we have the readout showing the dimension. As we close the carriage up against this part, you'll see the numbers on this display actually go from red to green. That tells us we've got a good part. It measures within spec. Green means go. Green means good. So I want to record these measurements. So I'm going to click on Save Measurement. And you'll notice it's recorded one sample, and one of those samples has passed. So as you continue to do this, it will write that information out to a CSV file for that same part until that CSV file is deleted or the part's no longer measured. So I'm going to try a different part. This time I'm going to try an aluminum extrusion, which is number four in my list. Close the jaw, check on the display, it shows a good part. I'm going to save the measurement. It shows one sample, one passed, and we're all set. So now I'm going to measure our part number three, which is a vinyl extrusion. So when we find the part in the database, it brings an image up. and click OK, it's the right part. And I'm going to show you over here how to measure this part improperly so you see what happens. So I put the part up against the fixed jaw. This part's angled on the ends and as we move the moving jaw over it you'll see that the part actually goes under the moving jaw a little bit. The way to measure this part with the current setup is to measure the tapers against the fixed and the moving jaws like this. We have that, the part is correct, it measures as a good part, we save measurement, and you'll see that the number of samples is one, the pass count is one, so that part's good. I have a case where for some reason the transmitter and the receiver aren't talking to each other. That could be that the receiver doesn't have power, the receiver's not connected to a computer, or the computer that the receiver is connected to is powered off. What happens as I move the carriage is the light on the RF transmitter flashes and you'll notice just below this light it says COM error. So there's a communications error between the two systems and that should immediately be cause for concern by the gauge operator. There's also a low battery light. The low battery light indicates that the battery inside the transmitter is due for replacement immediately.